All right. I think I gave enough uh, leeway for the the VOD to catch up. So let me just finish set, putting up the settings. I'm just playing with the camera for a bit, trying to get it just right. <clears throat> All right, I think we're pretty much there. Give me just a moment. Yeah, I don't think there's any other setting I need to tweak. Maybe we can zoom. I haven't done zoom in a little bit. Preferably not like max zoom, just like a little, just like. Oh, right there. Maybe move the camera a little bit closer to the center. There we go. All right. So, hi. It's a me. Back again. Hang on just a moment. Let me open things up on my Twitch so I can keep an eye on it in there. And then we're going to go right back into doing some art. Okay, that's open there. Alright, everything should be all good. So let's open up the piece. Bop. Whatever it decides to load in. We'll give it time. It's starting to get to that point where it's a pretty big file. Ooh. Once the background and everything comes in, that's when things start to get crazy. Yeah, we're in the yellow zone if you look at the bottom, right? Yellowish, greenish. It's still it's still not too bad because I haven't done too much with the background. But it's it's getting there because we're, we're not even... I think we're like mm, 20 to 30% of the way done with the background. I got a huge uh, bit of it done. Anyways, so um, this week we're going to just keep working on doing the background, trying to get that portrait just right. We're nearly there. I think just maybe a little bit more tweaking to get it just right. Uh, also, I am going to have to blur it in the background because I think uh, it does stand out a little bit too much. I think the other guy's face is even too much in focus. Um, and weirdly enough, oh, I see what it is. I made I put a green filter on everything, but I did put a, uh, but it doesn't necessarily matched tone so you can see like there's whites here let me make my brush not gigantic you can see that there's um white on his collar and his face is very pale meanwhile the character in like life he almost looks like he has blue teeth that's weird um he has like uh like yellow skin because of the lighting where is that where is that here it is it's just like green filter it's very simple um I'm also thinking of tweaking the shadows. I want more of a reddish tone because uh, I think that's going to contrast nicely with a mostly uh, green background. And I think the lighting being yellowish, greenish, you the contrast color of this shadow color is usually better whenever it's a strong contrast to the overall focus of the piece. So, like I said, yellow, green, focus. The shadows should be bluish, reddish. Which, I mean, I think it already is a little there. I think we can just make it a darker red. And then generally, I want everything to be much more shadowy, uh, much heavier, just like almost like an inky shadow where just everything is cast in the shadow. Um, but we'll see how we do. We'll see when we get there. <clears throat> so, yeah, focusing on the <clears throat> focusing on the background, maybe a little bit of work with the shadows. Uh, but we're going to keep focusing on specifically the portrait. So let's find out where all this is. Beep. Do I have anything in my notes? Let me mark this out. Let me just take a few minutes to mark these uh, the things that I needed. <laughs> Move, Chatterino. You're in my way. My way. Oh, well, that's actually your vector, so we can actually just go back in and type. I think. Here we go. So... Crit has a really weird typing function. I don't know why it's like this. It's probably just like a little bit of spaghetti code. and It works. It does what it needs to. It's not a very pretty thing. Uh, although I also don't know what the Photoshop looks like. So uh, it might be even better. So blood we got. Stripes on the shirt we got. Greenish yellowish tone we got. Paint over the texture the trails and everything as originally conceived. That's going to be like a final note. So... I'm going to leave that and don't forget. Let's also get rid of the colon because we don't need a colon. 
It's already huge. I don't remember what taught me, but there was like um a moment where I realized like if I'm making like the title of a list, you know, you know, you make you make a big bold letters, you put a colon, un line underneath, and then you start doing dot one note, dot second note, dot three note. Um, I realized that sometimes all you need is just if the word's already bigger then you don't need the bold. If the word's already bigger, you don't need everything to be capitalized. You don't need a colon. You don't need the underline. Just, you already have one thing that supersedes it. So, if the word's already physically bigger, you're already there. People will understand, like, big word is the title, little words are, is the body. So, I'm, uh, I've done a lot more experimenting with just, like, doing less emphasis on words. Like, I don't, I don't need them to be super, super, super different in order to get the information off the way I needed. The only reason why I like you, I care about stuff like that is because whenever you work with comic books, uh, it, you start to notice like how even the lettering is becomes like really important to the way that a story is received. That's why a lot of my pieces I like focus on clarity so much is because when you read comics, if you want like action scenes to really like feel like they have weight and movement to it, you have to have like a really good sense of clarity and actually understand what's going on um otherwise it feels very too messy it feels like um too vague and that happens a lot like uh one of my favorite artists or sorry an artist that i think is really talented but i have a hard time enjoying their work uh i don't want to call them out personally but there's one that's like on a couple smaller books a couple bigger books they're a pretty prominent artist but their art is gorgeous it literally looks like cinematic pieces like the way that they do the coloring but Something about the way they arrange panels and bend everything. I mean, I love, like, wacky camera angles, so I get it. But um, I think specifically with the coloring, they do, like, the black and white coloring um, first and then just color everything after. And I think something in that um, process that gets lost. So, like, it makes everything really dark. Like, everything just starts really dark. And it gets... It, it kind of gives me a headache when I'm reading his work. Because, like... I don't know, I think my brain tries to, like, figure out what's happening on the page. Just with, like, talking. Just, like, two characters talking. But you'll see, like, their feet first. And, like, everything will be shadowy. Except for the background, which is really bright. And it's just, like, it's it's a little... Something in that process is getting mixed up in my head. And I don't... I don't... It's, it's not fun. But it sucks because, you know, like, I support the artist. I love the artist. The artist does great work. But, you know, it's distracting. Like, it's it, it doesn't read clear to me. I need, I'm a, I'm a caveman, I need very simple stuff. Uh, one book I'm reading, let me go and show this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This huge heckin' chonker. This is the book. Uh, Gorillas by Bram Ravel. And I mean, this book is great as far as clarity. It's a little messy because it's just like all ink work. But like, I think you get like really good uh movements because it's like you know a bunch of chimpanzees uh in a war of a scene but because of that like the, uh, he a lot of this stuff like reads super super clear like the the movements between panel to panel everything and you know, it's super like simplified intentionally too like you can tell that uh, like they could go bigger on details here uh, everywhere they can go you know even more detailed even more accuracy as far as like you know vietnam war you know, go for, like, more detailed weapons and all that. But it reads better whenever, like, it's simplified for the reader. So you can see, like, up on this top panel. Like, there's all these buildings and, you know, everybody's moving. But you're specifically able to pick out the monkeys. You're able to pick out the Vietnamese. And, you know, pick out the buildings. And, you know, he could go further with the detail. But it reads clearer if it's simplified. <sighs> So yeah, that's why I'm a little, just a little obsessed with uh, <clears throat> clar with clarity and um, in art. But I think that mostly works for like stuff that's uh, very character based. Um, I wish I could have like the abilities of like more, uh, I don't know if traditional is the right word, but artists who have more of a almost like a painting style. A realist artist. I'm, I'm trying to think of the word for like 
old renaissance type artists where you know it's big grand paintings where like a lot of things going on atmosphere is really important lighting that stuff's a really you know obviously impressive and i think even more technically difficult than what any comic book artist can do but you know everybody has a preference and i think i'm i'm very much in the uh big fan of uh I lost my train of thought. Big fan of the, like clear, uh, clear, simplified stuff. I like it, 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 it. I'm constantly like thinking in my head. Like I think I need to dial up, dial down the details that I always spend on my work because like I think I'm more of a minimalist almost. Like I, I really like uh, just simple forms and really strong shapes. But I always get lost and just like trying to make things feel like they fit together and smoothing it down and sanding it down. And I feel like I lose a lot of that that good stuff that good originality that i used to have i mean b back in middle school it also looked terrible but i mean you know i still miss it let me see do i have that reference for the little 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 fella not that one i'm gonna go ahead and delete that bar reference we can keep because we're still not done painting the background oh he's all the way at the top I'm going to take you down closer to where I need you. Right here. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. I see. Now I see what the issue is. I'm going to turn off the chance for a bit. There we go. Okay. Just thinking of where I need to start go next. It's the wrong layer. a little bit of transition maybe we can put some on the other side too maybe we can add a little bit more subtly here so it doesn't feel like there's it's just like a strip of color it's just like the more like highlighted area there's still like neck going on under there I mentioned this before, but you can get away with like just painting over the neck and making it all shadow a lot. But sometimes you do just need a gesture and a gesture just enough. Also, I have uh, some news. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, I'm going to be going to Seattle sometime in the future. Well, I know exactly the date, but, you know, still, you know, in the planning phase of seeing what we're going to do. I mean, the, the 
location we've already have booked, the flights we already have booked. It's more just like what, the itinerary of what we're going to do when we're there. Um, it's always a little bit of a struggle because mostly what we think about when we go to any place is just like, what do they have to eat? And then it's kind of just just a lot of just a lot of thinking about food. And a lot of that stuff is usually better whenever you just like go to places once you're there. But you know, planning ahead always helps too. You, you should have like a mix of both, where it's like you have some places planned out. You already have an idea of some of these places, but like eventually you're gonna have to just like choose once you're there. You know, like like I've planned out places, then I go in and it's like booked all the way to the brim, and it's like, oh yeah, we have like a two hour wait. So it's like you have to have room for a little bit of a plan once you get there. Maybe you have a general idea of what you're gonna do, but you know, once you get there, just you know, wing it and do do what feels good at the time as far as like how to entertain yourself while you're in an entirely new state you know miles and miles away oh sorry did i even say it so we're planning on going to seattle and seattle is not a place i've ever considered going to i mean there's nothing wrong with seattle i just never thought about it really it's one of those places that you just hear in like movies and you just don't think twice about it didn't realize how close it was to vancouver i thought vancouver would be a little deeper into canada but it's like not not very far from uh, Vancouver at all. Like it is, I mean, on a map, it looks like it's almost like right there, just like a couple miles above. Obviously, that's not the case because, you know, the scale of the map, it's way more than a few miles. But I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's like close. I just realized I'm rendering this too much. This is really making me think about doing some more um, like rendered pieces that aren't, that have like zero line art because this feels really good. Just having these like paint, this like painting session is really different from what I usually do. And I've always considered doing it, but like it's, I think it's really like showing me like it's working out. I can, I can make some good looking stuff if I like take my time with it. Like I'm having to stop myself now because I'm just thinking like, wow, I could really get lost in rendering this out to like a fully finished piece. But this is literally a background detail. It's an important background detail, but it's background. Yeah, Seattle. Uh, I'm thinking of going to a cat cafe. I'm really excited about that because I'm a big fan of cats, even though I don't own any. Dogs are great. I, I think dogs are probably the best pet for me because I mentioned before, but I like really need that physical animal I can just, you know, hold and just like dogs generally just love attention like 24 seven. Like they need you all the time. And Part of it's annoying, and then part of it's like, you know what? That's exactly what I got a pet for. Like, I want something to just always pay attention to, and, you know, literally just them breathing, and I'll just be like, oh, my God, look at him. Look at him. Look at him over there. Breathing. Um, and then cats are more solitary. I mean, generally. I, I do know that there are, like, breeds that are real friendly. And I've seen friendly cats. They're awesome. I love them. But I've also seen cats that are kind of just, like, loners, and, you know, you pay too much attention to them, and they start getting mad. And that hurts me a lot. But I think at a cafe, it's like the perfect blend. Like a, the cafe is like, you, you're, it's just a chill environment. Cats are chill animals. It, it just, it, it just works. So yeah, very excited about that. We're also going to be maybe going on to the underground museum, checking out the mu pop museum, pop culture museum. They have like a hip hop uh, history thing going there and like a uh, horror uh like a studio so the people who did Coraline you already sh know I'm about that Coraline and then what else did they do they do Corpse Bride I think they might have done Corpse Bride or if not maybe some of the talents like you know know each other they did like Paranorman Box Trolls I think Box Trolls was the only one that I was like legitimately like not interested in at all Frank and Weenie yeah, 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 yeah. Like those, those, uh, those movies. They're all great. You love to see a studio that does like a, a qu quite a bit of um, like n real, like authentic uh, f physical effects. I'm not sure what they're called. But, uh, I just call them like real uh, uh, visual effects as opposed to like CGI. I mean, I think CGI is also gorgeous. I think everybody's well aware that there's some great CGI. I think Mad Max Fury Road is like one of those examples of like a great example of what uh, CGI can be if it's done like exceptionally well and not 
forced uh, down people's throats, kind of like uh, a lot of the Marvel TV shows have been. Or not forced down the, uh, the, the audience's throats, but forced down the workers, you know, just, you know, brutalizing them with a time, uh, time schedules, time, I'm forgetting my words. What is the word when you have to make, like, certain benchmarks? Anyway, it's not the point. But yeah. So, like, Guillermo del Toro is a guy who does, like, a lot of visual, like, just authentic visual work. Where it's, like, good makeup, good, good makeup, and, like, good uh, props, and all that, uh, all this stuff. All that authentic uh, feeling stuff. And I think Laika is also like that, where they where they genuinely, genuinely do, like, great, uh... Oh, what's that word? Whenever you, like, move a puppet every couple of seconds. I don't think rotoscoping is a word. But that comes to mind. But yeah, they're one of those studios, those studios that you just support as, like, a true fan of, like, the art. And Coraline is just a great, great little story. Great little story. Great little thing. Cute little story. Just, like, spooky enough to make you interested as, a, like, a, like, a weirdo kid. I think that movie attracts a lot of those people. Kind of like how those those people that are like super into the, the Nightmare Before Christmas, where they just buy all the Nightmare Before Christmas merch to the point where it's like it's just weird. It's just tacky to me. It's like I've, I like the movies just fine. Like I think they're good movies, but it's like it's like Disney. It's like Disney's fine, but you know once it starts to become like people's personalities, I like I it starts to get like a little bit like um I don't know if I like it like you like it. You know, to each their own. The corn line, I, 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 I haven't gotten tired of it, you know, like, I haven't seen the, seen people, like, make it their entire personality, they, like they would a uh, Disney or a Nightmare Before Christmas. Or the Corpse's Bride, which is weird, because that one's actually, like, a really solid one, too. Oh, sorry, I got lost in the Leica, the Leica verse. But yeah, maybe go to an aquarium, maybe go to a zoo. We'll see. We're gonna be fun. I'm really excited. Like already, like I went to New York last year. Last year was it already a year? And man, that was like one of my favorite trips. Like in, it was so insanely good. Just spending like a whole week going to like shops. Uh, uh, did we do anything really wild? Yeah, we did go to a museum there. That was so cool. Or, like, even the smaller trips. Like, I think we've been to, like, Virginia and, like, just other places in North Carolina. Where it's just it's just really fun to just spend a week or, like, a weekend just doing stuff that you wouldn't, uh, like, normally do. Just, just really going and taking chances on stuff. I think another Instagram bot just followed me. love those little notifications when it's just somebody's name and like seven numbers very trustworthy oh let me pull chance up see where we're at okay so i still need a little bit of paint over here too the paint i said yeah whatever you know what i mean when i say paint i think we're all well aware what about the bottom? Just a little bit. Is there a layer beneath this that does like the whole background? That's the line art. Where's the colors? I think it's, oh, here it is, okay. Oh, I see what this is. It's the, um, 
shadows underneath it that's making this like darker color. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, 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 okay. Back to tweaking the painting. I don't know if there's too much more I need to do besides the colors. Hold on. How do I get Chance back up? Where's Chance? Where's Chance? Chance, where are you? Chance. I could probably do that hand a little better. Just a little bit, not too much. And then I'm also gonna maybe do some lighting on it, so like it, it so uh, you know how I mentioned before, like the, I do gradients from the bottom to up, to the top. That way, like the focus, the it's brighter towards the upper region of the a body. That way, it's uh, just like a very quick way to. Uh, Add a shadow and also make sure that it's focusing the face, which is usually the focal point of any character. Humans were attracted to faces. We recognize patterns of faces. That's why we see the face on the moon. And definitely not because of aliens. I can't weep very well, but it's definitely not aliens. Just a little bit of hand. Because that, that would be a very long forearm. I'm just going to put a little bit of this to put a shadow. We could probably put like a rim light on it too where it catches like a lot of light because it's going against. It would like rise up a bit. Is there a brighter color that we're using? Yeah, anyways. I think we need a little bit less of this like white color. I think it's I'm, I'm overused it a lot. We can dial it back in once I once I get a lot more blue it back in. Noticing a distinct lack of blue. Now we we can use the white a little bit more sparingly to really point out like other spots. I'm gonna use this dark shadow to like make, make up the background too. That way it just fades into darkness towards the bottom. I could go for this like greener thing that I did over there uh, on the reference, but I, I think that's um because the page that it's on is completely black. I needed that green to make him stand out a little more. But now that this this the background has a lot more color, I think putting a little bit uh. Making the background a little darker will make it uh, make him pop. But I'm still gonna keep it like this messy like approach where it's like a little bit of green, a little bit of like nonsense in the background. There we go. I think it looks nice actually. Maybe just adding a little bit of green down here so it feels a little bit more chaotic. We'll we'll find it later. But I think we're getting close to being finished on this armor. Then I already have a second announcement. Second announcement. 
I am also going to have an interview tomorrow morning, or well, afternoon, for a new place. And that's going to be a Monday through Friday job with occasional weekends. Um, pays like way, 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 way more, like six, seven dollars an hour more than I get paid now. So that should be in just like a complete change up for things. Um, also, it's in an area that I think is a lot nicer than what, you know, where I work. I work in my hometown, so, you know, five minute drive to my job. And I'm very excited to finally get out of, like, town. Uh, driving's not going to be fun. Gas is probably not going to be great. You know, it's probably going to be eating a, a, up a lot of what I uh, earn on top of that. But I still think it's going to be better for me. And I think, specifically, getting off that night shift. Uh, I'm a night person, owl. I love being awake at night. But, you know, I think it's time to, like, move on from that. You know, I think... Uh, when you don't want really to hang out with people much or do much on, on days, you know, like when you get off of work, you just want to kind of sit at home. That works, you know, like a lot, of, especially when I first started doing night shift, all I want to do was just work, 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 and then go home and then just relax, play games. But now I'm at the point where it's like the second I get out of work, like I need to go somewhere. I need to go out to go a co to a coffee shop. I need to go out to go uh, to this new store and hang out for a bit. You know, like I need uh, go to a concert just all on my own. I just need to get out the house. And that gets really hard whenever all pretty much everything's set up for the weekend warriors, you know? Like, everybody's set up, everything's set up for people who have that regular, you know, 9 to 5, uh, week, uh, all weekdays, no weekends. Sorry. No weekdays, all weekends. Fun on the weekends. Blah, you know what I'm saying. So I'm hoping this is going to be a good change for me. But that is going to change the streaming schedule. Uh, for for a while, so we're gonna see. Well, I mean, for a while, however long I work there, um, hopefully a good while, uh, unless there's something like really gross about it. So I'll go and let you know. I am gonna be a banker. Uh, I, used, I work at a hospital now, and I love the hospital, but it's just it's just getting to the point where it's like the pay is kind of not great, even with like shift differential. It's and you know we've gotten like three raises in the past year, but it's like. You, the raise went up like one big chunk where it was like an extra dollar an hour awesome but then like since then it's been like 12 to 20 cents plus and that's not that's not that's not much you know that's not enough to like think about staying and the amount of work that we have to do has just gone up like it is just kept getting worse and worse and worse and the communication just feels like it's getting worse and worse and worse where it's like we're hearing less from management you know back back when I first started working the uh would really try to like talk to us on night shift, you know, like they'd stay a, a few extra hours, or you know, when the newest ma uh, management came in, they would do the same. They would like stay hours after they were off of work just to relax and talk to us and see what how we're doing on night shift, you know, ordering pizzas for us and you know like all this stuff. And I got really tired of pizza. It's nice that it was free, but goodness gracious, I got really tired of getting pizza every every single day. Just having lukewarm pizza just sitting out there for me every every time I came to work. Especially during COVID. COVID, it was the worst because everybody was like just ordering all the pizzas for all the people that, that worked at a hospital. It was nice. But, you know, <laughs> maybe some Chick-fil-A once in a while. Maybe maybe some McDonald's, a hamburger, not pizza. <sighs> but yeah, the Monday to uh, Friday. Who knows? Maybe I can just get home as early as I can and start streaming on Tuesdays just like normal. But we're gonna have to we're gonna have to see it might be even like a few weeks where i have to take this thing off i'm hoping i haven't had the interview i don't it's not a short thing yet i'm hoping you know it goes well if it does i'm planning on starting maybe october 1st or 2nd if they would if they're fine with that they don't you know that doesn't become an issue they don't need somebody like right this second Gives me time to, you know, like, give my 20 weeks, sorry, 20 weeks, my, uh, Jesus, <laughs> give my three-year contract to end things. Yeah, my two weeks notice to, to my boss and uh, all my coworkers. Because I like my coworkers. I don't love them, but, you know, some of them I really like. Some of them are good people. I mean, I think they're all, like, decent people. Some of them have really awful politics, but, I mean, that's to be expected. It's North Carolina. You can't win them all. I could argue with them. I could tell some of them are a little nicer. Some of them have just like politics where it's like, oh, yeah, we should just have people with rifles at the border and just, you know, fire at will. It's like, um, 
I think you're a monster. I don't think you're serious, but I think you're li just just a little bit of a monster. And then others are like, yeah, you know, like I'm, I don't really believe any of this stuff. This is, you know, this is insane. And it's like, okay, you know, a little bit more faith with you. And you know, they would call out the other guy for being way too over the line. It's like, okay, there's something there. I still think you're both, you know, problematic, but at least, you know, one's advocating for outright, you know, human rights abuse, and the other one's just like, uh, maybe we should be, you know, should be a little nicer than that. Sorry, that's not the point. Um, I always get bogged down with politics. I'm really annoying about it. What was I just talking about? So yeah, October 1st, October 2nd, that's probably uh, what I'm going to ask for. We'll have to see. Maybe they even need me later. Like, maybe they'll be like, oh, we're going to need you, but like, we can't get anything as early as like two months. So we'll see then. It's going to be part of the discussion. I mean, realistically, I was looking for like $19, $18 an hour. But then my sister who helps, who helps, who's helping me get this job, um, she told me like $21 an hour is like where they, is like a good rate. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. We're, we're going to ask 20 because that's insane. That's like, you know, $6 more than I get paid now. So five to $6 more than I get paid hourly. Which I'll take, you know, like I want it. If, you know, but I'm not gonna go crazy, you know, like I'm gonna. I don't wanna like put like the idea of getting the job in jeopardy. And I mean, I think I ask for way more than what, I, uh, what the people around me ask for. Like I remember one of the first things I asked back when I was working at the hospital was like, you know, what did they ask for when they first got paid? Or, you know, like how did they do the interviews whenever they, they were, whenever they first got their job? And they, they like, didn't understand that you're supposed to lie a little bit on your on your resume and they were like what if they hire you for a job that you're, you're not qualified for it's like then you learn it on the job it's like you know like you know um you can interview really well and just lie most people are lying when they say that he has these qualifications i have a degree in information technology that doesn't mean i understand everything about technology you know, that doesn't mean I have, like, a super sharp memory. I actually do have a really good memory of my um, my degree, so it's not exactly applicable to me. But I, uh, my brother was, like, asking questions because he started he started college back up. And uh, he was asking questions about, uh, he was like, do you even remember any of this? Do you even remember what uh, this is? Or, you know, where the kernel cur is stored in the system? And I gave an answer, and it was like, oh, well, yeah, actually, you're, you're right. You you do remember your stuff from school. And I was like, oh, I thought I was just lying. But apparently, I still remember everything. Which is good. I was mostly a programming software kind of student, though. The hardware stuff did, did wasn't, like, super grasping to me. But it's good to know that I still have that those memories. And that education didn't isn't like, useless. Hopefully, we'll see. But it, I went into college knowing like the degrees don't really mean too much. It's all about like the uh, the 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 work that you do. Like uh, back in high school, they would tell you like degrees will help you get in the door, but you know like what they want is experience more more than anything. About it, where anywhere you, you apply. <sighs> And so far, I haven't really felt anything about my degree. I keep being told, you know, like, you, you have a degree, things are easier for you, trust me. And it's like, sure, but, you know, like, I've applied to uh, just as many jobs as you have. And I don't get any, any, you know, callbacks or anything. Like, it's, if it's helping, I'm not seeing it. It's possible that, it, you know, I'm just not even lucky. But, like, I'm just saying, like, it, it's like, it's that thing, you know, the college is supposed to almost be like a guarantee for a job it's like you get a degree you get a job you know that's the literally the entire point of college <laughs> you're you know, very rarely are people like genuinely curious about like educating themselves in this one career unless you already have like a career path where it's like if you're an artist you might have a genuine pr passion for uh, for for learning about art from like a college if you're uh really into rocks and geology or animal life you might genuinely have a passion for like the education you're getting you know, there are careers that are, like, super popular and people don't really like it. Like, you know, business is one of those things that people just do. It doesn't necessarily mean it's something they've always dreamed about doing. Uh, criminal justice is another one where it's, like... Or not criminal justice. It's, it's the one where you, like, look at labs and crim criminology, something like that. But that's one where it's, like, they didn't 
people don't really take that because they they um they're super passionate about crime it's more like there's they just think it's like a gonna transition really easily into like having a good job ready for you once you get out of the market and that's what it was for me with computers it's like i like computers i love computers but i'm not like a super passionate about computers it doesn't translate that well for me where it's like i i like being able to control the computer for what i need and that's kind of where it ends like just enough about software that i know what i'm doing or i know what what's going on in the system i don't necessarily want to like get into linux and start building my own computer software from scratch so it only does what i need it to do but i know people who are legitimately passionate about like just playing with computers and just seeing what comes out of it and seeing how they can abuse the computers to do what they want i know people who do linux they are weird <laughs> they're also beautiful people but they're weird just like artists are weird people we all got our thing I don't remember why I went on this rant. Oh, just degrees in general, like job prospects. But yeah, I think um, banking is going to be like a real easy transition for me because it's a lot of the same stuff. You know, it's just data entry, helping customers, um, and handling money. I, I like I, I pretty much all the places, both, well, all the places, the two places I've worked at, McDonald's and the hospital, both have like some money that we have to deal with and we, you know, have to keep counts and stuff like that. Uh, I'm pretty decent at math. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of people around me, whenever I'm like math just comes up, I will have it down like already, and they're just like pulling out the, their phones for the calculators. And I'm like, "What are you doing?" It's like we're still in under a hundred, so like it, we can do math that we'd simple addition that quickly. It might help that I also have an alarm that like gives me math problems to wake up. You know, like, I have to figure out, like, what is 36 plus 42 plus 82? And I have to do that before, um, within, like, 30 seconds or else the alarm starts going off again. So now I think I've unfortunately trained myself to be very good at math. So much to the... Oh, sorry, very simple math. But, you know, it's not natural, I would say. You know, people don't normally do that kind of math. And that's the only reason why I have, like, a decent memory of that kind of stuff. Not more than other math people. I, I also know those those kind of nerds, like STEM nerds, and they're freak, freaky with it. Like, they can do decimals and, multi and multiplication in their head, like, with decimals. That I can't do. I'm stuck with addition and subtraction. Maybe in a multiplication if you talk to me nice. So, yeah. I think all that will translate pretty well to banking. I'm doing this like I'm interviewing for banking, like, here now. Maybe it's just prep work. Like me just hyping myself up. I'm getting so distracted. What am I doing? Okay. He's rendered. Let's let's leave it at that. Bop. Bop. I think I'm going to just take the same tone. Because this is supposed to be the same person. And I'm wondering if there's like a quick way for me to just paint over the color. Let's see. Let's try. I'm going to make this brush like a color. Hmm, maybe like a hue. I don't know what the difference is, but I think that helps. Maybe we do it lightly. Oh, let's let's start again. Because I did, I am, I am now remembering that I also intentionally wanted him to be a little rosier in the in the painting, because you know this is supposed to be when he was human. So just making the shade just a little bit, maybe these like paler areas, like you know, the jaw around the mouth, the forehead, those are going to be paler, but the um, nose and cheeks, those are going to be a little rosier. So we're just going to try to like softly bring the this like green in, see if we can get a little closer. Softly adding a little bit of the color. Just not going fully there. That was a little too much. 
underneath the eyes. Sorry, above the eyes, I meant. Also, his hand down here. There we go. Just bringing the tone a little bit closer where it um, needs to be. Let me see if I can do like a do, undo, or, you know, like uh, compare the two. Let's see. There should be one that talks about like adding a layer right here. Is working. Yeah. Okay. So this is what it was before. You can see very pink, very, very different. I think that's good. I think that's where we are now. All right, let's see if we can go in a little bit more specifically and try to blend these areas a little better. Change this back to normal. So now we're just back to using like a brush like we normally would. Making the lips a little darker. Not too dark because then it's going to look weird. I'm just realizing somebody when I was at work and asked me how the COVID was doing. I don't remember who it was, if it was like a security guard. Who did ask me? It wasn't a patient. I, knew, I would have remembered if it was a patient. Anyways. But yeah, somebody asked me... Um, if COVID was, you know, if it's coming back or anything. Oh, it was a custodian. She was asking me if um, COVID had, like, died down or if it was, like, coming back up. It's not, like, exploding, at least not here down in, the, uh, you know, small town North Carolina. Um, Small-ish town. I don't know what to call it. It's, well, I do know what to call it, but I didn't feel like talking about it. It's called an excerpt, but not the point. Um, but yeah, it's not back you know like it's not like exploding or anything it's just kind of still constantly here um so like maybe i would say once every other week we have like a patient diagnosed with covid and you know usually they are elderly i think what that is is mainly like people who are older those are the only people that are hospitalized if someone has covid that's like younger they just don't really come to the hospital because you know like all they're uh, really experiencing is a cold unless you know they're not vaccinated in which case it's probably a little bit worse than a cold Thank you for that, by the way. Really, really awesome. Um, hope you're, you know, hope you don't uh, have anything bad happen to you or anything bad to happens to the people around you. 
for your decision. That would be awful. We don't need it any worse. Point is, um, yeah, it's still, it's still around. Um, and from what it feels like, it's kind of on an upswing. Like, not a huge upswing. Just, like, maybe slightly more than normal. So I would not be hesitant to, maybe in some more crowded places, like, you know, airports, uh, hospitals. Obviously, if you go to a hospital, just wear a mask. It's not required, but why? Why would you go into a Even if there's no COVID, it's a hospital. People have respiratory diseases. People spit and are nasty. Like, it's, it's gross. I'm not telling you to wear it everywhere. You know, you don't have to wear it every single place you go to. But maybe if you go to like a festival, wear, wear it at the festival for a, like some events. And then, you know, when you go to your private tent, maybe take it off there. You know, your private tent with just like your buddies. Again, not a, I'm not a, ho a doctor, nurse or anything like that. Although I have seen nurses that are um, still c denying that COVID like really did anything, which is insane because we literally had COVID. You know, they're they're like vaccine denialists where they refuse to get a vaccine. It's like, hey, lady, you're a nurse. You give vaccines. You know what you're doing. Like, why would you hesitate on something that you have given to thousands of people? That's not that's not great. Not only is it hypocritical, but it's also stupid because it's a vaccine. We know how they work, and they've literally been going on for years now. And no, you know, people aren't dropping like flies. They've literally been distributed to the vast majority of the country, and like, what's uh, maybe like a few dozen people have said is like an issue. And then you know, now they're starting to like attribute any like respiratory or like heart symptoms to to the vaccines instead of you know the disease itself anyways not the point 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 but yeah just keep an eye out i think i'm whenever i take my any flights i'm gonna keep it on if i'm like public transport i'll keep it on uh gym is specifically i think like insane i think you would be crazy not to wear it because gyms are literally just a bunch of people packed you know shoulder to shoulder just breathing like <laughs> Like it is, especially like I'll go and admit me. I'm nasty when I when I'm at the gym. I'm a heaving mess. I'm not. I have very bad stamina. I will be like, <sighs> every exercise. I wear a mask at the gym. It's not that hard. It's not great. It's not fun. Um, what am I doing? But yeah, I've not stopped wearing the mask to the gym uh, since COVID started. Specifically because, A, I work at a hospital. So it's possible that I have symptoms that I don't know about. Or, you know, like the people who I am around won't have vaccines. Because, you know, not everybody goes to uh, Planet Fitness is, um, I don't know, super liberal, uh, super willing to use vaccina vaccines. There are probably anti-vaxxers that go to the, the um, gym. And, you know, like, I'm not in interested in getting them hurt if they don't want to be hurt. Um, I don't want to cause any more damage than is necessary. So, I'll, sure, I'll wear the mask. And then B. Um, ooh, what was it? If I'm carrying something. And then, yeah, B. I don't want anybody that's there to also give me what they got. It's like just like the hospital. It's like even if I'm dealing with a patient that's not um, whoa, that doesn't have a hiccups or sorry doesn't have COVID, hiccups. I have hiccups. Um, there are other diseases, you know, like there are other respiratory diseases. Respiratory diseases existed before COVID. That's one of those things that like kind of got lost in all the confusion, which is just like there's also other things, you know. There was a flu that also happened. You know, COVID kind of stole the spotlight because it is was, you know, like an important thing to get concerned about. There's also like other respiratory diseases. 
you know like i have been in so many rooms where the kids are just like coughing like like not covering their mouth not doing anything just like spitting all over the place they're not covering oh my goodness it's so aggravating i mean they're kids you know they're not doing it on purpose so i'm not like that crazy but look it's so it makes whenever as soon as i see them like cough on like their hands or like sneeze into their palms and not wipe it anywhere. I'm just like, thank God I decided to have like my N95 <laughs> before I walked in here because these kids are sick and I absolutely would have gotten it. I have not been very sick since I've gotten, since I've started like keeping my mask on. Cause like, if you look at Japan and other countries, like they wore it too before any COVID was like ever an issue. Like back in like the 2000s, early 2000s, I've been seeing Japanese people wear masks on public transportation just generally if you are sick it's not hard especially now like they're cheap masks are like what like ten dollars for a hundred mask or twenty mask or you know what however many you don't have to wear a brand new one every single time it helps but you know it's all about reduction you know it doesn't have to be perfect just do something to help you and to help others be selfish if you want but you know Protect yourself. Let's see. What if I just put like a uh, same yellowish tint on everything here too? Let's see. Where's that yellowish tint? Oh, it's gonna be in chat, like the chance layers, right here. And it's on hard light and at twenty-two percent. So let's see if we can get that there too. Or like 22%. Is that on right now? Why is it not visible at all? He got pushed all the way to the corner for whatever reason. There he goes. Oops, I meant to put hard light. There we go. Then down to like 20%. There's a little bit of greening. Maybe a little bit more to push it further in the background than normal. Maybe like 25, just a straight 25. Just a little bit of cheat to help uh, things congeal a little better. 
That way everything feels like it's part of the right. Everything feels like it's in the right place. Okay. So let me also grab the shadows. Do I already have that as a rough? Do I still have like the copy? Yes, I do. Okay. Can we like combine the two overlays? Because there's the one over here too. Well, this one's also really dim too. Why is it? Why does it make it so much darker? Oh, I was messing with the wrong one. Hold on, hold on. Okay, here we go. Turn back on. Pop. Now we can turn it down. Way, way down. Hmm. Maybe like twenty-two percent, and then we turn down the the other one. This. Turn this back up. Yeah, the only thing is I need to take off like some of these like lines that I have over here. So let me turn this all the way up. I need to remove like a lot of like the this stuff here. Because this stuff already has like shading internally. Oh, come on, man. And then let's grab that dark color. And then make sure we get the shadow for the character. Do I have that reference? Yes, we do. I'm making the shadow way too small. Come on, let's let's just phrase all this. Okay, let's start again. Paint. Oh wait, hold on. make this small. Starting from like the head. Let's see. Little gap there. Head. Shoulder little gap for the chest and thigh. We're going to just fill that in, actually. It's probably not going to be super accurate to the reference photo. Pelvis should be around the same height, so maybe around here. Just like right there. Just a little gap. not really feeling it. I think I'm going to keep this mostly. We're going to fill this, make his leg look a little thicker here. I 
but I'm just going to raise it a little higher so the head's a little bit more like right here. Maybe like here. Erase this, sh shape it up a little better. Let me also select the character. Where's Chance? Where's Chance? Select Roma Opaque. Select Invert. Then we're going to... Well, actually, no, don't invert it. Then we're going to get that little line. Erase it. So that way we just only erase outside of uh, Chance. Just make things easier on me. Oop. Not that. Might eat into it a little bit. Let's see. Select. Well, hold on. Before we do that, let's also do the same for the other overlay, the other shadow overlay. None of it should be affecting chance, which it might not even. All right. Select. Deselect. Like I said, I was gonna erase some of the the overlay so it also isn't doesn't have like ghost trails anywhere. Let me take out the reference for just a second so I can see the other side. Erase this side too, make it brighter. There we go. Okay, 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 go. So I like how strong this lighting is, but it needs to be a little bit lighter. Um, I wonder if there's a way to make it up more of a medium to dark transition. Hold on. Maybe like this for the first section. And then maybe if I put another layer on top of this, make it a multiply as well. I'm gonna use the purple lighting. Maybe if I put this overlay on top, just like it's an eraser, and just some of the areas like towards the bottom of this area, then from here. Let me get a bigger brush. I'm gonna just, just swipe it. Okay, so let's see if that makes any difference, really. Oop. Okay, so without... You kind of just get the one transition where it's just one big spotlight on him. And then... Bip, there's a little bit more of a transition where, like, things further get, like, into the background that need to. Like, the roof over here gets a lot darker. The bottom towards here has a bit more of a shadow towards the ground. We might need to transition away from the shape because I like the shape, but I do think it's a little too spotlighty where it's like I want it to be a spotlight, but, you know, feel a little bit more natural. Maybe like a light's just tilted to the side instead of, you know, an actual, you know, clear cut hole of light. Ooh, so maybe like it transitions softer towards the bottom. So, you know, like strong light. So maybe for like I'm just going to get like a, a big 
pen tool and just draw over everything. So what I'm thinking is maybe here, like a is that what just happened there. Yeah, just over here, maybe it being harsh, but then it like keeps going and then tr is a little softer towards this area. So real bright here. For, you know, like the main shape. But then it starts to tr tr trickle out from here. Kind of like this. Yeah, exactly like this. I think maybe as we go along, we'll try to get a little closer to that. This is what I'm thinking as far as like the lighting. Can we do something to make it look like light? That kind of works. So you can at least like see through it. So yeah, that's where, what I'm thinking of like where it's like real harsh here. Let me just trim it a little bit, make it even sharper. Yeah, so you can see like a little, just like a hard light up towards the top, because maybe that's where like the start of the lighting is coming from. But then as it trickles down towards the bottom of the screen, that's where it like starts to dissipate. Because it's not a clear cut spot, like just, you know, cutting through the uh, cutting through the bar. It's like a, maybe they knocked over a single light bulb and, you know, like the bulb is really strong on one side, but, you know, like the other side's not angled directly towards the light. So it's still natural-ish, but it also keeps just enough of that like really strong um, contrast. What am I thinking? Keeps some of that um, keeps that strong spotlight while also keeping it a bit natural, a little bit more with the flow. So there's still the artistic of artistic uh, approach of having it dark towards the bottom, or where it's not very important. You know, just like things are very vague and blurry and out of the camera spotlight or out of the focus out of focus but still keep a strong you know focal point that's the idea anyways that's where we're gonna go hopefully let's take this off so let's see it's gonna be here isn't it i hear the dog so i'm gonna try to Let's make it like 100%, just so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, we're going to have to erase the shadows again. Probably should do them on a different layer at this point. I'm going to turn this off too. I don't want the transition to be too smooth. Neither. Then I think once we get to like the final stages, we're really gonna like make make a little bit more artsy, poke in and out. But right now, I just want just want to keep it a little vague. Maybe you can also break it up here a little up top too. A little towards the side here. And see if we can repeat it over here on this end as well. Because you can see, like, it's still dark here, but that's because I have two layers doing basically the exact same thing. One is more for color, and then the other one is more for, like, just slamming down a bunch of shading on it. So it's unintentionally way more shades than I plan on, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. No, I don't want to talk about it. There we go. And then we can turn it back down. So hopefully it looks a little bit more natural. So where is it? Big is it was just there. It was just there. There you are. So down to like 70. Transition it just a little bit more. Oh, let's keep that. Maybe like right here, just a little cleaner for transition. 
What was also bothering me was uh, the spotlight kind of ended right around here. Right around here. Nope, that's not what I want. Right around here. And it was a little weirdly convenient that it also ended right where the blood ended. Which I didn't want. I didn't, you know, like that. That's that rule where you don't want like things to match up when they're not supposed to, unless there's like a good reason. <sighs> so let's leave it actually lighter. Let's leave it light here. Then we add this one too. But it's gonna be a little bit more focused. That one we can also tone down so it's a little bit of both. It's already as light as it can be over there, apparently. And that's when the overpainting is going to come in, but that's for later. So, let me go back to the painting. So, is there going to be an issue if I just, like, erase this? What's it going to look like? Okay, that's not too bad. What if I just erase all this? Because I accidentally made it all part of the same layer. For whatever reason. Well, I know what the reason was. I forgot that there was a... I forgot that there was another um, layer underneath it that did most of the background. So this is the part that I need to fix. But it's kind of hard whenever I have so many layers changing the colors. So let's turn this, this, how about this? Does this make it more accurate? Nope, still there's another layer. Um, which one, which one, which one? I guess it would be this one. Yep, this is the one. It's not doing what it's supposed to. Oh, okay, so this is just the guide. So what if I take this off? What does it look like? Okay, so let's just edit this then. Oop. Just clean up some of these lines. Nothing too crazy. I just want to make sure that, like, some of these, like, streakier areas aren't getting too cluttered. And then some of the bold lines aren't, aren't so bold that, like, they're just obnoxious. I think what I need to do is uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, then I'm just going to mash it into the, the layer underneath. That way we just have like all of it on one layer and that way I can actually overpaint properly. So like I planned on like there's no line art layer, it's just all one, the background is just all one layer that I can just edit in, you know, as I please. Also, I've described this technique to my other artist friend in my, in my group and they were like having a panic attack because they hated the fact that I was not using layers for everything. And I mean I'm I'm a dirty I'm a dirty little boy. I have like already let me see image properties. I have seventy four layers already. So like the idea that I didn't do the background as like a bunch of different layers, I think that's fine. But they did not oh they were not fine. They were not fine with that. They were very much not fine with that. Big not fine. Which is fine. Like pfft. Wow, I just can't believe I just said that. Um, not angry or anything, you know, like uh, just some funny uh, like banter, some uh, like uh, I don't know what to call it whenever it's just arguing, but in a fun way. Where it's like there's no serious stakes to it. It's fine, you know. Like I have my style, they have their style. But as far as memes go, it's funny to pretend that we're actually upset at each other. What is this that's causing this dusty look? Dusty, crusty looking, looking, uh, looking, uh, oh, okay, that's part of this layer. Some of the remnants of when I painted over it and it didn't work successfully. And I need some here too. Oh, wait, hold on. And what are you? Is this part of it? 
Yes, okay. We're almost to the point where I can merge him. Just gotta clean up a little bit more. Okay. And then let's also make sure I finish this line because obviously this is showing up right now and it's kind of clear that it it's not supposed to look like that. There's wood paneling and it's just not showing up anywhere but on, on near the character. Because, you know, like when, when I was working on Chance, I, I needed to just, just focus on him. And I kept erasing parts of the background because, like, it was just distracting. But now we're in this stage. I'm going to need some of this. That's actually perfect that I erased that line there. It took away from the, the super cool blood drippy. Drippy blood, if you will. Oh yeah, let's, let's, let's clean this area up a lot. Holy crap, this is disgusting. This is just a mess right here. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Sorry, that's just how British people sound in my head. Or, I think that's Irish. Irish, Scottish, I'm sorry, I really, it's really hard for me to, t to tell the difference by ear. The other guy that used to watch me, uh, Peanuts, he says, like, I'm, like, one of the more educated, um, Americans that he's seen, as far as, like, Americans knowing at all about culture in, in England. But, uh, one of the things that I still don't understand is, uh, what in the world is the difference between... Irish and Scottish. I mean, I know they're different people, you know, like, I understand that they're different islands, different histories, but, like, specifically, you know, like, the difference between an Irish accent and a Scottish accent. The words that are used in Ireland and not used in Scotland, those things are still very, very hard for me to understand as a simple Americanoid. And it'd be really funny if there was, like, Irish people that also don't know it. Like, I, I feel like this is one of those situations where they might be like, there is a very clear difference. They say this and we say that. And then, like, they'd be like, actually, we do use that word, too. And it's like, oh, well, um, you're not allowed to use it. And it's like, okay, fine, that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. I also don't remember off the top of my head the difference between the British Isles, Great Britain, the United Kingdom. I, I'm pretty sure United Kingdom is just England, like just the that that part of their part of the island. Um, but then the Gr Great Britain is like combined Britain and Ireland, I think. And then the the British Isles are like all of them, all three of them, Wales. Sorry, four, five, six, seven. There's too many islands. Because, I mean, there's also Ireland and Northern Ireland. I mean, they should be unified, but, you know. Let's not bring up that. I don't know enough about the history to accurately say as much. But, uh, generally, I side against the monarchy. Elizabeth was an adorable old lady, but, you know, still a monarch. And also, some of the policies she specifically uh, advocated for were terrible, as far as, like, ever dreaming of a world without the monarchy. Like, she did plenty to make sure that the monarchy would remain always there. And it's really obnoxious. Because it's like, hey, we had several wars about this. We agree that monarchies are not good. Why are you still here? In serious, because they like it. They like the money. They like the fame. And it seems like the English still have not gotten annoyed by it yet. Like, it's a mix. They either don't care or they are really big advocates for it. 
and you know it's not my country i can't i can't tell them what to do but i will make memes about you know deaths deaths within the monarchy and then you know if it ever comes to it i'm I, i'm definitely advocating against the monarchy that's not a radical position for me that is astonishingly easy for me to just be like oh yeah i don't i don't care about the monarchy Lizzie's in a box in a box. It's genuinely surprising to me, like, not more people are, like, openly against her in, in like, British politics. Because, I mean, or not her. She's already dead. Who cares? Um, but, like, the monarchy in general. It's like, really? Like, I mean, I know Americans, we, we hate, we openly hate everything about our politics. But it feels like it's very, like, hush-hush in Britain. I mean, there are open advocates within, you know, like, for, you know, leftist change and that kind of stuff. But it just doesn't feel as prominent, and I don't know what that is. Besides, you know, maybe, like, government-owned news. Uh, maybe just, like, there's enough to appease uh, people, you know, like, with universal health care that, you know, they don't feel the need to, you know, push against uh, change against it so you know like there's a i don't know what to call it like a pattern uh a line that hasn't been crossed that once it's crossed then people will like start more openly advocating for it that's what, how it is with labor right now where it's like we're fine with labor you know we're fine with a little bit of exploitation but you know like once it starts to get to the point where we're like we really start to feel the grind of exploitation that we have to like push back against at least a little bit at least a morsel you know and then have open advocacy for union union unionization jesus but i don't know i will say there it some unions seem to have the strength in, in the uk that uh american can only dream of but then they also don't have the, the amount of power that uh, Americans have to openly block protests and do things like that it, as a union. So it's a mixed bag. I don't know. I'm just rambling about an interesting aspect of the politics of England. I would like to know more if it wasn't for the fact that I am always interested in American politics. This is part of this layer. Okay, I think I'm going to combine these layers now. So we're going to combine the background with the guide with the the um, paint underneath. So merge with layer down below. Bip. I think I'm going to keep the painting separate. I'm going to I am going to merge the the layer underneath that though. There we go. Then I'm just going to keep that a group just in case we decide to dial back how green the painting looks. All right, so we are now an hour and a half in. Let's see how we're doing. We have refined the background a little bit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And we are now going to be able to 
render it like a painting like a I should have been doing a long time ago but I forgot about the combining the line art with the colored layer it's still all new to me we're getting there hmm Let's see is there anything to rant about I already mentioned Seattle I already mentioned possibilities of a new job we'll see we'll see no, don't want to get my hopes I feel like it's locked in and I'm a little worried about that because because I'm starting to realize like wait I, I keep talking about this thing like it's a sure 100% thing but you know there are issues that can come up like one thing is um my hair I've been dyeing my hair for like a year or two now I love dyeing my hair and I don't want to give it up completely I'm willing to dial it back like if they I, my, I think they don't allow hair color there but I think maybe I could ask them like hey what about like more normal hair colors like blue fine blue's crazy for me too but what about blonde just dyed straight blonde or you know like bleached just a straight bleached color like what about like colors that are realistic in, on human beings blondes exist you know brunettes exist I don't know red like red ish hair can exist like what about just like some some within that within that lane? Because I I like my hairstylist. I like hanging out with them, and I like doing getting my hair done, all that kind of stuff. So I really don't want to just like picture moving on without it. You've grown too attached to the process and the people, and it also just feels nice. I get a lot of compliments from it because people don't usually do it around here especially I think uh, guys don't tend to do it around here so it, make, it makes me stand a little bit out a little bit more uh, it was all part of like this idea where like I realized like my visuals were very boring and very reserved so like I would I think um I had an idea of writing a story about this but there's that really strong desire that a lot of people have especially like outcast to fit in and you'll do a lot to like not stand out and i think i realized at a certain point like okay like i have done so much to fit in that now i'm starting to fit in too much like i just blend into the crowd and i don't think that's good like especially as like an introvert no one's going to notice like me and just like pull me out of the crowd if i don't have anything that makes me stand out and that's when like the earrings the hair tattoos like a lot of this is starting to come together now now I think I'm getting to the point where I'm like, I'm getting pretty comfortable with where I'm at. You know, a little bit of tattoos, nothing too much yet. Hopefully more down the line. Um, earrings. You know, I can't, I'm not going to probably, I'm probably not going to do any more piercings from here. Unless somebody really says I should, you know, like I, I get a friend who's like really excited to get piercings and maybe I'll get like one more. But I'm, I'm, unless, you know, unless something like that happens, I'm not very really interested. Um... And then hair color, I basically have tried like, you know, orange, blue, purple, bleached. There's not very many other colors I want to try. Like green, I don't think is a good dye. Red, I don't think is a good, it's a little too basic. Like I don't think it's going to be like, going to catch eyes like that. Like I, to me, red hair dye always looks cheap because it's like one of those first like big colors everybody does. It's like blonde is the first one of the first ones black if they are not already a blonde sorry if they don't already have black hair but all the people i see that have dark hair usually their first color is red because that's i guess the easiest one to do so i don't think i'm that interested in those colors so i am as far as like from here on i don't know if there's like any, anything else crazy i could do with my hair and I think I've already decided, like, bleach is probably the best color. Just, like, straight, like, white bleach hair. Because it's just very neutral, and it mixes with outfits well, so, like, I don't have to worry about, like, clashing colors too much. Which isn't super important. I mean, like, the hair is, like, a separate thing, but... Yeah. Color coordination is, like, the easiest way to have, like a, like, a decent outfit. A decent fit. I'm gonna add a little bit of this green. I'm not sure why, but that feels right. Just to have like a little bit of that green like reflecting off of this thing. 
be kind of do it like I do like the photo glare like you know just some straight lines a little blobby add like a haze to it so it's not like a perfect photo okay then I'm also gonna go for a grayer color do we still have the palette okay here we go so I think this is the color I have here yeah Mm, so I'm wondering if there's maybe like a name in between colors we can do so like let me grab this brown color that's like mix add this oh sorry and then this color here and let's see if we can like transition the two me like this right here I'm gonna just add that there, put this back to green. Grab this color, okay. Now, now we have it. So, let me see if, can I just like paint? I'm gonna try to make it look like uh, two people hanging out at a bar. Maybe just like old school, Not, nothing too crazy because this is very, now we're getting into like background details that really, really don't matter. So, but just you know like try to give you enough of a idea of what like shape I'm trying to get here Kind of make the room a lot darker. That way, like they stand out more. How is this, does this look from afar? Okay. Yeah. Nothing too crazy. Yet. Hold on. Where's the painting? Take that off. Yeah, it looks a little wonky on both ends, which I think is fair. Not perfect, but you know. At this stage, it's not it's not super important. I might even add like another like even darker shade. So just like right here. But again, I don't want too much definition. So maybe like a merge between these two. A, a color between these two. Just keep it real light. I'm gonna get this guy long hair. I just decided. We can imagine that this is like Jerry, Jeremy McNeil. Just the two of them hanging out in a bar, maybe like, I don't know, during the 60s and 70s.
Oh yeah, let's get more of this, these darker colors. So let's add a little bit to the hair. And just a little bit of the bright color on the hair, just a highlight, but nothing too strong, nothing too strong. All right, and a little bit more of the dark in other areas so like they can get, uh, feel, so it feels much more like of the environment. There we go. Nice little painting. A little bit too detailed, but I like how it looks. Ooh, I think the next one is probably gonna be like a, like um, up, 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 like a building. So I'm gonna do like the entire sky like this. Like a very like this. We can think of this as like opening day. Grab this dark color so we can make this like the alley between the buildings. We could maybe put in like another building like right here. So it doesn't look like it's a huge just gap in the middle of nowhere, especially because these are Scottish European houses, not a American buildings where they're like super, super far away from each other. More windows up here. Made some lines across. It was like a brick facade. I'm gonna put like a lamp here. Fill in this a little bit more.
Get this grayer color. Put like a sign up front. Maybe a little bit of the white here. Make it stand out a little bit. Back to the dark color. Now I said this one. There we go. Make it a little bit smaller. There you go. There you go. You can kind of get like the impression. I think that lamppost really added something to it. There you go. Just quick, quick, easy little tiny like vintage photographs. Like they probably should be in color to be honest, but you know it's not gonna, it's not gonna break any hearts. I don't know a freaking plane. Something about a plane feels right, but I'm not gonna do that. Probably gonna do another like crowd. Hello, where's my pen? Okay, I couldn't see my uh cursor all right so this one i'm probably also going to start it off just dark is this one going to be another like late night club club late night pub uh photo you know lights are low just everybody chilling having a good time singing probably i don't know is that something that happens in pubs i'm just going to draw like a bunch of little people so it could be like a group photo Seeing me in pubs is just something I always seen in in movies and shows. It, I always wondered like, do they rehearse the songs? Are these songs we're supposed to know? Who's who decides? Just like, how does that work? I think it's one of those things that just like are in movies and probably aren't real. There you go. That's all you need. Wow, that actually worked really well. It does look like two or three people just poking their heads out. I don't know what I did to make it work, but it works. I think just like the little dots for heads really helps. Like just making sure that the shape of the anatomy is right. Like getting the scaling right. I think that really helped. Um, let's see. I want to check something real quick. Okay. I'm gonna turn off the roughs. Ooh. So that's that done. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't know what this is, but I've seen this in a lot of pubs where they just have like wood beams up top i think they're they also help like make it so you can have like cups and beers above you like above the bar area instead of just being like on one wall you can have it literally like all around the bar they look nice though and uh, plus yeah they do add like a little bit of nice uh wood aura natural wood aura we like natural wood here I'm gonna act like these are pub seats. There you go. That's about as much detail as you need. Um, I'm gonna make this entire area dark. I'm gonna try to avoid getting any of these like really d bright areas. If I can. Cause this part, by this point you're like far, far wall. Like I, I, don't, I don't want any of the like the light standing out here. Should I do the same for above? Yeah, let's do the same for like above. I'm gonna make it darker anyways. That's the idea. Push it back into the background. Okay, so let's see if I can get mix these colors well. Also, let me also put in a photo real quick. So I mentioned before that for the thumbnails, I had a, the bottles kind of already done. Let me see. Or I might not have mentioned it in those, in those words, but let me show you. Let's see. Go to my folders, my folders, my folders, next folder, the other folder, that one, 
don't want to talk about my file structure for whatever reason. Something about that feels like not a great idea. We're going to go for the smallest one. I'm getting coffee all over my mustache. I think we're going to try to grow a, a little bit fuller. I usually trim it, but I'm trying to like get like a full, full mustache. Okay, there it is. It is tiny. Wow. But you can see here, like uh, the way I got the bottles done, just like a little bit of a bluish gleam. Now it looks like that's so dark. Is that what JPEGs do to it? Man. Anyways. So let's see. Can I get that kind of color scheme for the bottles area? Because it's not exactly fitting the color palette. Uh, I, I just chose my own colors here. But I think I do think they work very well. So let's see. Can I just have this? Let me just like paint around it so like I keep that little gleam. Make it a little bit more thin and a little harder to notice. Okay, then we have this like orange color here, orange brown, but just a slight little sliver. It's just a tiny little sliver before it, the highlights come in, the real highlight. This area shouldn't be too detailed. I just need enough to like give you the idea of like glass bottles and cups. Like a stocked bar. I'm going to grab this also just a hint of purple that I had here too. It just felt like a good contrasting color. Like a little bit of glare. It's one of those things that you don't really notice, but it's just enough that you pick up on it from afar. Yeah, definitely. From, at least from like here, you can tell like there's a little bit of gleam on the bottles, but not enough that it like takes over the profile of the entire photo. Like it's not going to make be like the dominant palette color, like still dominant color palette, greenish, uh, orangish shade. But, you know, this purple is just still being hidden well enough. Very stealthy color. I might add even some more colors. We'll see. To further differentiate, differentiate everything. Like everything, we're gonna add some of this green. Just a little bit. A little bit of orange. A little bit of the purple. There we go, this little streak. Forgot about this, this is supposed to be the main highlight anyways.
There we go. All right, that's good for the bar area. Let's see if we can define this guy up front a bit. Ooh, let me get a good stretch. Hmm. Actually, before I move on, I just realized all this is on the wrong layer. Hold on. Well, sorry, this one's going to be an easy one to fix, though. There we go. That way it's just a reference. All right. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember what I was doing. Now. So we're going to grab this, like, bluish shade. I'm going to see if we can make that the, like, base color behind the bottles instead of this, like, super dark color. So add a lot of this, like, blue texture. And again, I think this is just to make things pop a little, little stronger. So I think instead of going for, like, a shade that's still just within the palette, I think having a bit of a stronger bluish shade will like contrast a lot better. And then having like this bright green just pop up just here and there. Kind of just blurred in the background. Maybe it's a mirror. Maybe it's just more of the, of the wall. It's like the same shade of wall just peeking through the shadows. I'm going to have it like a little bit streakier. Yeah, just like this. Perfect. Just vertical little streaks. Maybe mix it over here too. Like like little gaps between the bottles. Maybe make it up here too, so it like fits the pal so it fits the um the wall being like this different color. Just a little bit up here, just a little bit, just a touch, a dash. And even dial it back too. There we go. All right, now we can do away with that. So what was I about to do? Oh yeah, this guy up front. I'm going to work on him just a little bit. We have now reached the two hour mark. So I think maybe within the next 30 minutes, I'm going to try to finish things up. So we're going to see if I can just work on him a little bit and not too much further outside of that. Solely for the fact that I don't want to like make this a super long stream. Not, not this one. Why is it not? Oh, it's not an eraser. That's why. Here we go. Now we're only erasing what we need to. Erase all this, make him like way thinner. Actually, before we even go that far, well, no, 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 let's do it after this. I'm gonna merge him too. All right, and that way, this is all just one mess of layer, and there's not like two different shades that I gotta balance, it's just one layer. Let me lock it so I can just color over this part. I said lock, please. What is going on? Oh, I didn't click it. Why is it not? Click. There we go. So I can only change the parts that are already filled in. Okay. Now we can do that. So first, let me make this back into a separate thing. Okay, maybe just a little bit of dusting underneath, a little bit of dusting, a little bit of it, there's a little bit. And make this dark again, oop, 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 wrong brush, nope, there you
You're just painting on, painting off, painting on, painting off, just trying to get it to feel like a good bounce. Then we're probably going to make it like an actual color. I'm going to have this, just a thin little line of this table come across like that. So you can consistently see all down the way down, like that's where the edge of the table is. And we also grab his head. Just fill it out. Nope, that's not an eraser. And here we go. Thin this out a lot. I'm actually gonna grab this color and make this as like shoulder. Like he's just falling into his own body. Cause he is completely just out. Knocked out, good night, good good sleep time. Alright, I'm gonna keep him with a shaved head too. We got to think about what color we want. So I think we're going to keep it this base color. But maybe add some more stuff to make it look a little bit more filled out. Because it is also probably going to be another kindred, another vampire. A vampire that decided to challenge Chance at um, Primogen. I forgot what it's called for the Anarchs. But you know, clan representative. Or not necessarily um, replace him, but like challenge him. And he learned very quickly. Oh yeah, this guy uh, kind of has earned his place. He is not a joke, as I have previously believed. I like it to imagine as like one of those uh, funny videos on like Twitter, where it's just like I have made a miscalculation here. I apologize, good sir. Have a nice day. I thought you were not the one, but you have corrected me so. Maybe not make it too rendered. I just realized I was just like completely smoothing him out. Okay, uh, let me also fill in the background because I'm noticing there's a gap in the coloring. These white spots are just like highlights that I haven't turned off because they're above chance. Hold on, let me beep. Turn those off. And while I'm here, let me also get rid of this little smudge. I'm pretty sure chance is standing in front of this. Ooh, hold on. It's not letting me go over it. What is this? Oh, okay. It's part of the painting itself. Just like a little speck that I never got completely cleared off. Oh, it's in a group too. Darn it, darn it, darn it. There we go. Okay. Back to the guy. Still not exactly sure how I want to handle him.
That's an ear from the side. You can't tell because ears are freaking weird. And also, I didn't draw one, but mostly the other one. Oop. You're not an eraser. You're an eraser. Gonna straighten this out. There we go. Only keeping what we need. There we go. Let me see, where does, uh, what does it look like? Let's start putting things together just a bit, just to see how we're doing. Chance. Where's the other overlay? There we go. Don't know why there's a, just a gap here. This is the wrong layer. What color is this? That's not the right color. Why is it? Oh, yeah, that's right. There's another overlay on top of this one. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. now we got it. Bip, pop. We can turn it back to an overlay. Make it back to like 20%. There we go. Bottles it down a little bit. Let's go back here. Let's make the beer stand a little bit more. Hopefully. Okay, okay. Back to the guy. Where's the guy? I do not know where the guy is. Here it is. Okay. So what are we missing? Let me just do another layer real quick. So I can see if I can draw what I'm doing. So. We have him. Like his collarbone. His shoulders here. Other shoulders here. Collarbone maybe sticking out a little bit. Like this. Neck is here, so it's going out this way. That's neck. This is the head. And then the head, back of it's here. This is it. the head is if it was a cube, basically. So ears should be ears right here. Hmm. Don't know what else we would see from here. So I guess the hair Just like around here if he has hair. I think I'm gonna keep it shaved And then maybe we need just a little bit more blood All right, so ear All the way up to here, like that.
I'm gonna make his head a little bit less like a melon here. There's only one melon-headed person that we, we need in this world. There we go. Can we just, one of my spray paints, something like this. No, it's not right. There we go, that feels a little better. A little bit like that. Because we're basically looking at the back of his head. So most of this would get some stubble. Let's see if we can clean it up a bit. Oh, I see what the issue is. They still have the overlays. There we go. I don't know. I don't think I'm feeling it. I think we might need to give him hair. Just so, like, it, it's a little easier to explain what's going on. As far as, like, shapes. I have granted the hair. Use it wisely, Ch summer child. Why is it still not grabbing the right color? Trim this up a bit. There we go.
Is this looking right? Ooh. Ooh. I'm starting to get really tired. I don't know what it is about streaming, but like after a while, like it really starts to drain your energy. Even like all though all you're doing is just like sitting there talking. And I think it's like um trying to be focused. As well as just like sitting down in one place. Really doesn't like keep you up like that. And then also maybe because I got up a little early and my sleep hasn't been great, but you know. Let's blame it on the stream. It's funner that way. What is it? Stop. There we go. It's a really hard one. It's trying to get like this head a head pose to work, and like I want it to read as what I'm what I'm going for, but it's hard. I think I need some more blood splatters on him to like really make it like clear, like yes, this guy has been beat up. You know, have a connection between the fist and you know the face. But I don't know. There's other there's something else that's like really making it like not work just right. Feel like there's something structural that's missing. It might have to do with the palette that I'm using. Not sure. Okay. Is that the brightest color? What is the like bright color here? Or rather, what's the bright color here? Oh, that's not even like bright, bright, bright compared to everything else. All right, what are we looking at with the? Okay, I think maybe some blood splatters, and then the last little thing I need is I might change the head position. So let me do like another layer. Let's just paint over this guy. Let's see if I can change the head to be more towards the camera a little bit. Just like we're going to keep it vague, maybe keep no eyes so you don't like recognize too much of his face. But let's just experiment for a bit. Let's make his face like right here. Right there. Like this is what we're going to be working with. And see if we can make this work. Just like right here is it gonna be his mouth. Enough so I can focus on the painting. Hmm. 
Mm -mm. Not just quite. Mm. Oh, I got, I got, I got. Let's mark out the face. So the forehead's gonna be like here. Maybe bring in the hairline a bit more. We got the ear here. I hear, I hear. Something like this a little bit. Let me see, can I turn it around? Maybe we get a better idea. Okay. Kind of looks like some horrifying right now. I guess that works with the mood of the piece. Hmm, something about this doesn't feel right. Hold on. I'm getting there though. Let me just let me just block this all up. I think we need to start piece by piece. I think this is working way better already. I want to give him like a tattoo on his eye or he's like right on his face. I 
just give him like that like classic like ruffian like bar brawly kind of guy okay we're getting there we're getting there but I am about to cut it short so I think once we get like the structure of his face down we're probably gonna leave it right there Can I do it like a quick splat? Hmm, not good enough. Hmm, not good enough. Let's do this one. Switch back to the brushes. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, how's this looking from above? Okay. Oop. Then we can get this dark color. There we go. I think that's, I think that's gonna be the one, but I'm wondering if there's something else we could do. Maybe, let me try tweaking his face a bit. It's, can I pull it like down, up, let's see. I think maybe it's just small, especially since it's supposed to be like way closer to the camera. Kind of looks like Ganondorf with his skin color. Yeah, like that. Not an eraser.
There we go. And then maybe we're gonna like uh, paint it to make it look like it's fading into the background a little bit more. So instead of this like really bright color, we're gonna change it to something a little different. But we'll get to it later. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the sign off. So for this week, we worked on the background a bit more, cleaned things up, got the colors a little bit uh, better separated. We're just another step closer to finishing this guy up. So I think maybe just uh, we gotta finish this guy up front. Then I think we're almost at the point where I need to start doing like merging and final touches. Maybe a little bit more with lighting, a little bit more in final touches. So, to do list, foreground guy, lighting and color and shadow. Yeah, as in like just tweaks. I think maybe shadows as a whole thing. Oh, hello. Hi there. It's good to see you. Unfortunately, I, I'm about to wrap things up for the night, but if you want to take a look or, you know, just hang out for a bit, and that's just fine. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be doing this guy in the foreground, this bloody guy. Uh, I'm going to hide him a little bit more so his face doesn't like, you know, distract too much. Because like I said before, uh, brains are naturally just able to recognize human faces really well, even when they don't exist. Even when it's just like not a face. It, if it looks like a face, our eyes will lock onto it. So I'm going to have to like do a little bit to kind of mess him up a little bit more. Make him fade into the background, put a little bit more shadow on him so he doesn't look too distracting. And then he also looks way too green. Like he looks like Ganondorf. And uh, that's not exactly what I'm going for. So figure out some color that's going to push him back. Um, this is basically uh, Bigsby Wolf. Um, except it's Vampire the Masquerade. So he's Gangro Vampire. Which is the werewolves of the vampire clans. Um... I don't think so. So Bigsby Wolf, I remember, I read the first volume of Fable, so he's more of a detective. This is more of a lawyer who just happens to, like, beat up a bunch of uh, thugs at a bar every now and again. Because in the gang role, they're, like, basically, like, hippie commune people. And uh, if you're not, like, constantly acting like an animal or a furry in real life, they get a little, you know, questioning of your, uh, if you're really, like, a, like one of their clan. So, because he wears a suit and, and a tie and the suspenders and that whole look, this is supposed to be like one of the other gang girl decided to challenge him on his uh, ability to see if he really was a wolf. And he got his answer really, really, really efficiently. Uh, I'm trying to make this look very, not too graphic. I've done images where it's like extremely bloody, but like I'm trying to go for something a little bit like just a little bit of blood. Really, I want that like trashy, dark, shadowy veneer. But yeah, uh, I'm starting to see the relation to Bigsby. Uh, it wasn't intentional, but it's it's honestly really close. Like I think the they would have very similar vibes, except for Bigsby is just a New Yorker and then or Chicago, it, Chicagoan, Chicagoan, while uh, this guy's uh, Sc like pure Scottish, just Scottish broke everything. Is it broke? Sorry, I don't know that much about Scottish accents. Scottish and Ireland, they mix together. I know that's not supposed... To, you're not supposed to mix those two together, but thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is 100% um, my own drawing. Um, it's just something I've been slowly tuning and tuning and tuning. This is like week five, six, seven uh, of working on this. I mean, each session's only like two hours a week, so maybe like total... Oh, do I? Have, does this thing tell me how long I've been working on it? Let me see. No, it doesn't tell me how long I've been working on it. But yeah, this is like 74 layers, maybe a total of 12 to 15 hours. Yeah, we're just slowly coming together. Ooh, did you subscribe? Hold on one second. Yeah, thank you for following. Um, I'm working on these um, every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. I am about to sign off, but I really appreciate uh, you stopping by. Uh, next week, I'm going to continue working on this guy, sharpening him up, finishing up the background and foreground. Uh, the character himself is basically almost done. Yeah, uh, it was really fun to work on. A lot of the smaller stuff was the fastest part, because the the really the parts that take re a really long time is the character, because you know like I want him to stand out the most. But yeah, I'm really excited to get this uh, finished. Um, let me see. Like this. Oh, I forgot this layer. Let me turn these back on. So I really want to like darken things up. Like I really want these to be like dark and gritty and dramatic. So I'm like thinking about picking this up like up to like here when we're all done. 
So you still get just a little bit of glare from the bottles. We're going to have to tweak it to make it a little bit brighter. You still get to see his face down here, just like completely shattered. The table ticked over. Uh, the paintings in the background. and But you still get like this nice, rough, like shadowy texture. Something about that just feels very nasty. Like, you know, almost like the bulb with like oil or something on it. Um, small pictures as far as like donations, eh, not really. Uh, I, you know, like I'm, I'm, tr I like keeping this as my hobby. Like I do do commissions if you want to like purchase something, but if it's just like small stuff, um, we can maybe like a goofy little picture just on the side. Uh, but you would have to come in for another stream because again, I'm pretty much finished for tonight and just wrapping things up. But I really appreciate the, the talking. Uh, if you wanted, like, I don't know, like a goofy meme or something on on the side, we can maybe do that next week. Because I do like doing, the, like, tiny little uh, sketches just to hang out with us. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the sign-off. So next week, finishing up the foreground, finishing up the background. It's probably maybe another one to three sessions, somewhere in that range. Sorry, sorry, not even one. It's definitely two or three. We're not finishing this next se session. There's still too much work to be done. Still too many tweaks and final touches. But, yeah, background, foreground gonna keep working on that two to three more sessions then we're gonna be finished and going on to the to the next vampire um i am live every tuesday 6 30 p.m eastern standard time again if i get a new job that might be changing by next month but for now all my tuesdays are clear we should be keep go good to keep going um check out my instagram instagram is usually where i'm the most up to date is the camera even pointed at me hold on a second okay yeah the camera i'm on the camera's on me Sorry. But yeah. Um, check out my Instagram. Same name as my Twitch, uh, or it's linked down below if you uh, aren't able to reach me there. Uh, that's where I post all of my artwork up, most up to date. So the first place it goes is on my uh, Instagram. Well, first it goes to my Discord friends, then they can talk about it. And then we go we go to, you know, like the, the um, Instagram. Um, and then also I do updates on my life. Like I'm going to Seattle in like a week or two, so... To keep a lookout for that if you want to see some photos and be annoyed by me posting on my stories because where else am I going to post them? Um, I also have uh, my DeviantArt if you want to see some of my older work and if you like that community a little bit better. I know that there's different like art channels. But yeah, I'm, I've been active on DeviantArt for like the past 10 or so years. So check me out on DeviantArt. You can also see some of my old cringy stuff and you can see where I like came from. You know, like the, the, all, my artwork, I think I started around middle school, high school. So you can see my evolution across a few years. Um, and then my YouTube channels. My YouTube channels are also really uh, important. So I have two channels. There's my full stream archive, which just archives a full stream onto a um, channel. That way I can have it for posterity. But if you don't have the time to watch the full two to three hour streams, you can also watch the time lapse channel, which is the entire stream edited down into like five minute chunks. So you can just see the progress that I made on the art. And then what when I finish a piece of art, I do what I call a supercut. So a supercut is the all of the time lapses combined together into a really huge time lapse. So it's maybe like 10 to 15 minutes. So you get to see the very, very first few little sketch lines all the way to the final touches. It makes me look very skilled. It makes it look very smooth and nice. Uh, yeah, I really love editing those together and excited to see how that comes out for this one. Um, and then commission sheet down below. I think, yeah. Yeah, so I have a commission sheet down below if you want me to do a full commission for you. If you want me to draw one of your characters like I have here. Um... I really love to work on people's uh, characters as far as like D&D, Vampire the Masquerade, or any kind of like TTRPG. Or if you want me to draw one of your favorite like, uh, you know, comic book, manga, cartoon characters, anything like that. Uh, I, li I just like having those big, you know, character moments and really feeling like I'm representing your character the way that you're happy with. So take a look at the chart down below. Shoot me a message either over email or on Instagram. Although try to make it clear that you're not a bot. The, you know bots are really annoying on instagram so just you know say something about what you're hoping to get done or you know like what character you want me to draw or you know just something about my art that makes it seem like you're actually paying attention to what i'm doing you know just just to help me out with the with the bots um and then also i have a paypal link down below so if you don't want to go through all the trouble of going through a full commission and you just want to add a little bit of you know a donation just to you know show that you're you're part of the stream and you care 
uh, I'd appreciate it. It just makes me feel like my time is really being valued whenever I'm just chilling out here. I'll do this regardless of the money, but, you know, it's also just nice to feel appreciated that way. Um, so that link is down there, down below as well. But again, that's going to be it for this uh, this week. I will be here again Tuesday, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time next week. I think we're good. Yeah, we're all good. So yeah, we're going to be keep keep working on this guy. He's going to keep looking better and better. Two to another, maybe, another maybe two to three streams. And then after that, we're probably going to do another vampire. I think I already have that one lined up. I think this character I already had an idea for. And then the next character I already have an idea for. It's just after that where I start to blink out again. So hopefully I'll have that third one finished. And then we're probably going to go back to doing a, a, some non-Vampire the Masquerade characters after I get that third one. I've been on a streak of three vampires, then we take it off. Three vampires, we take it off. Three vampires, we take it off. I think one of these uh, sessions I'm going to have to do four. Or one of these sessions I'm going to have to do two. One or the other. But, point is, we're done. I'm, I'm going to stop talking. Hope you guys have a good night. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. Goodbye. Have a good night. Bye-bye-bye.